Good morning, everyone. I'm out early here today. It's just getting light. Dogs are already out running. I hear the chickens. And I'm home alone. All alone. Yes? Oh, there's many people over all the years ask me, aren't you afraid to all by yourself out here? Or don't you get lonely? Okay, well... There's always people coming and going here, so it's it's not like, uh, but I love my alone, complete alone time here. Yes? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, is one ever really alone? Yeah, that's kind of the question, isn't it? Well, most people believe in a spiritual life, right? Yes, it's kind of, that's kind of what it is. And if you do believe that, then... Well, it shouldn't be a surprise that you're never really alone. You know, <laughs> physically you may be by yourself, but even then I've got all them critters around me. So what if you don't have any animals or this? And then you do, and you do you end up all by yourself. And some people are really afraid of that. But again, you're never alone. You're never completely alone. Never. Ever. That's an absolute myth. <clears throat> uh, I would say if people could watch me and you know, kind of cameras would be up, I didn't know or something, and could watch me in secret all day long, they'd go, man, that woman has a problem or something, right? Well, who is she talking to? Huh? What are these conversations she's got going? Huh? Yes? <clears throat> well, I do a lot of it out loud. A lot of people do it just in their head. So they think, yes. And we have uh, terms for that, uh, psychological terms for that. Schizophrenia, for example, is one of them. Yes, it's considered a disease of the mind or something. Is it? Is it really? Or is it that when people are afraid to be alone and suddenly right, there is this quiet, there is this no interference from the outside, where then suddenly their mind is, you know, opens really up and they get to have a look into that. And that freaks them out too, yes? So then rather than this alone time per se, where then yeah, you get to experience spirit life, right? becomes a really amazing experience, yes? And, oh, okay, what's going on here? Then, uh, rather than, it becomes a, 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 another fear factor in people's lives. And it goes the other way. And yes, where then, if you want to call it, craziness comes in. And spontaneous combustion. And that then shows itself in the physical. Yes? And, well, yeah, people got... There's pills out there now, certain other therapies, you know, to get people's mind under control, heart to mind, under control, right? What if that were just treated a bit differently as a natural phenomenon? Not phenomenon, <laughs> just a natural thing. Yes, uh, uh, hard to understand that. Mm. Well, in any case, so uh, for me to be in the physical just by myself without other people around is always a really freeing thing, a really amazing thing, uh, where then I have all this time uh, to do what? Have conversations, have give and take. With my spiritual nature. And what? The spiritual nature of others. Oh, is it always good? Well. <clears throat> well, how do, is, does it work in the physical with people? Does one click with everyone just like that? Does everyone that you meet always have the greatest intentions? Right? Or. Uh, is there, oh, okay, I see where you're coming from. I see what you're trying to do, right? Yes? 
sometimes people don't notice, get completely run over and very, very discouraged. You know? Start to mistrust people, right? Um, become paranoid. Well, that happens in the physical of people, right? Yes? Well, what about the spiritual? Same thing. Ah, but again, how well do you know yourself? How anchored are you in life? Even if things don't always go great or whatever, right? Yes? Mm. I've mentioned stories before where I would be doing something and suddenly I had this, oh, <laughs> what's this all about? I know that's not me. <laughs> and then I'd go, well, okay, you got two choices. You can leave, you can stay and learn from me, but you don't get to create havoc. Yes? Anyway, I have to say, okay, drug-induced hallucinations and and then that kind of you know okay now spiritually people open up and all that kind of jazz well that's on you and it's a dangerous thing to do in my opinion because you're not in control over your mind anymore over your heart to mind then you're not in control anymore yes you're letting all kinds of things in that you think is just, oh, it's just drug-induced. No, it's you, you're altering your state of mind when you take drugs. And when that state is altered and not in control anymore, then you're opening up yourself to all kinds of havoc from spirit. Yes, from the spiritual. So, but people do it anyway, right? Yes, well, then don't blame anybody else out there for your <laughs> for the mess in your head. <laughs> well, anyway, I thought I shared it this morning because I got up this morning and here I'm, I'm just, oh, wow. I just, oh, my gosh, I had the whole house to myself all night long. It was just this, oh, how wonderful. And I, again, my give and take with spirit world is just, it's always there. Right? When I'm around people, it's kind of more in the background. Not always. Sometimes they've got something to say to someone. Right? And then <clears throat> they, they let their self be known. And then other times, yeah, it's just, okay, that has to take a little backstage now. But when I'm by myself, I can be absolutely, completely immersed in that world. Yes. And love it. And learn from it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, to do what then? Maybe teach again here. Yes. Uh, just saying. Anyway, so. Oh. Whoa. Ah. Oh. I find it interesting from my own experiences in life on how when someone that we consider has some physical limitations and uh, it might even show in a way in their cognitive right, way that where, where they're having a hard time expressing themselves as others do, right, that if you actually get to know them and have a conversation with them at, at, the, at the level that is possible, you find that their spirit, their spiritual nature in their mind, really, is much healthier. Yeah. yeah, than most other people. And then people who physically have no limitations, they're fine. They, everything works just great. And spiritually, they struggle immensely. Yes? Interesting. Well, anyway, I had to say that, didn't I? <laughs> Let's get going here. We are in 2 Samuel 3. <clears throat> oh, okay, all right, all right, all right. I find that there are very simple solutions to many uh, problems mind 
But when it comes to the mind, all right, I don't call it the brain. Huh? The brain's not functioning properly or something. I call it the mind. Yes? Yeah? Because the physical and spiritual are always connected. Yes? So, often, the brain doesn't function properly because the mind's not functioning properly. Yeah? Yes? Okay, well, science would disagree with me, but I, well, <laughs> I guess you got to be me to know different. And the best example that I can give you is when I was sitting at the 11th hour uh, as a volunteer with people who were dying uh, in their last few hours, a few minutes, this and that. And oftentimes when I would get there, the struggle that they would go through to settle, to pass on. And one of the things that I found, it worked or worked, it was often the cause of these struggles was that there was still something that needed to be either forgiven from their life to someone else, to a situation, or they needed forgiveness. And so I would be there to do that with them. And amazingly, amazingly, Every time afterwards, they settled down. The struggle seemed like over. Okay, completely over. Oh, pff, few minutes. Tuck, tuck. No, it was the beginning. It set the stage, the beginning to be able to go forward. Yes. Anyway, so there it is. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. 2 Samuel 3. So the war dragged on between the house of Saul and the house of David, but David grew steadily stronger and the house of Saul steadily weaker. The sons born to David at Hebron. The sons born to David at Hebron were his firstborn, Amnon, by Ahinoam of Jezreel, his second, Jiliab, by Abigail, widow of Nabal of Carmel. The third, Absalom, son of Makkah, daughter of Ptolemy, king of Geshur. Oh, we had another wife. Ay, ay, ay. The fourth, Adonai, Adonijah, son of Haggith. The fifth, Shephatiah, son of Abital. Five wives. Now. The sixth, Ethraim, by David's wife, Eglah. These were born to David at Hebron. He had six wives and six sons. Man, how many more kids did he have? <laughs> six wives. <laughs> I bet that harem was a mess. <laughs> Whatever. God almighty. But it needed to be mentioned. Yeah, okay. You got a bunch of sons. Got a bunch of wives. The rift between Abner and Ishbal. This is what took place during the war between the house of Saul and the house of David. Abner took complete control in the house of Saul. Now there was a concubine <laughs> of Saul's called Ritzpah, daughter of Ayah. And Abner took her. Oh, okay. <laughs> Men, women at that time were just handed around like cattle, didn't they? Okay. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Ishbal said to Abner, why have you slept with my father's concubine? Oh, he knows about that. Well, they don't keep anything private. At these words of Ishbal, Abner flew into a rage. Am I a dog's head? Yeah, you are, he shouted. Here am I, full of faithful love towards the house of Saul, your father, his brothers, and his friends, not leaving you to the hands of David, and now you find fault with me over a woman? <laughs> May God bring unnameable ills on Abner, and worse ones too, if I do not bring about what Yahweh has sworn to David, to take the sovereignty from the house of Saul and establish David's throne over Israel as well as Judah, from Dan to Persheba. Okay, so he just... Abner just you know, admonished Ishbal because Ishbal says, "Why do you do that? Why do you go ahead and sleep with my 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 father's women?" Yeah, you know, right? which falls dead. So I don't know. You know maybe it was consensual. 
and uh, and uh, you know and 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 here I am uh, I mean uh, what's the big deal about that you know you want to start fighting over a woman yeah but at the same time now he says so now yeah because you did that over a woman I'm going to go I'm going to go and help David right yes I want to make sure David's going to be in control well what is he doing now is he doing anything is still saying hey I you know give an explanation why I did that and said well, you know, if I'd known you feel that bad about it, I would, you know, probably not. You know, maybe next time I'll come talk to you first about it, you know. But let's move on. You know? it, I mean, this is something that doesn't really have anything to do with the leadership, this and that. So, and what's going on in the, all these houses and Israel's. And let's go on. Abner could have said that. No, he flew into a rage. And his rage did what? He did exactly the same thing as Ishbel just asked him. Why would you do that? Right? And here Abner flies into a rage and says, well, now, because you did that, you said that, I'm going over a woman. I'm not going to support you anymore. Isn't he? What he's accusing Ishbal of, he's doing exactly himself. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, but, but I'm telling you what. Ah, I bet you Abner's conscience kind of is plaguing him, right? Yes. Okay. Well, there you go. I'm telling you. <laughs> Ishbal dared not to say a single word to Abner in the reply, as he was afraid of him. There you go. That's it. Okay. Ishbal had one question: Why are you doing that? I think it's a it's a it's a well deserved question. And Abner fixed it, pulled the whole thing in a completely different direction. Where then Ishbal goes, "Oh, okay. I better not say anything anymore. Right? He is the one that's supporting me. He's the one in control." Right. Yes? Uh-huh. Abner negotiates with David. Abner sent messengers on his own behalf to say to David, and furthermore, come to an agreement with me, and I will give you my support to win all Israel over to you. Very well, David said. I will come to an agreement with you. Now again, so why didn't David go? Now this is someone that's been fighting. They've, they've been fighting against each other. So there is. What did I say? Communication? Okay. So there's communication going on, yet... Why, why isn't David kind of a little stumped over, okay, what's going on here? Did he not know Ishbal? Right? He knew Jonathan really well, one of the sons of Saul. How about Ishbal? He didn't know him. So, you know, and he, he, he was really upset that, you know, some dude just killed Saul, right? The anointed of Yahweh. And it was very clear where his loyalties stand, in a way. Okay. And, uh... Yeah, and and was happy that they buried Saul properly and all that. And mourned in seven days. Fa what, what, they fasted one night or, oh, or seven days or some seven days. I don't know. I can't remember what David did. But right. And here comes Abner now, who's not in charge, who shouldn't be in charge, really, when it comes down to it, if you want to have the two houses, you know, head banging against each other. It's Ishbal, the descendant of Saul, right? And David here just without even questioning or going back to God saying, hey, should, should I? Should I team up with him? I'm not getting that here. Not right now. Maybe I should read on a little bit. Let's do that. But that's interesting, right? If it's not happening. So what? God's not being asked? Hey, because God may say, mm -hmm. no, you don't want to have anything to do with this guy. He's got problems. Problems I don't like. You should talk to Ishbal, right? No? Okay. Let's say. Oh, well, David has all their wives too, right? So maybe Abner and David were kind of on the same wavelength when it came to all that kind of jazz. Okay, Daniela, I can't, can't help it. Very well, David said, I will come to an agreement with you. I impose one condition, however. You will not be admitted to my presence unless you bring me Michal. Oh! Saul's daughter, when you come to see me. Oh, remember Michal? Who's Michal? Oh, 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 what is this all about? David then sent messengers to say to Ishbal, son of Saul, give me back my wife Michal, whom I acquired for a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. <laughs> I wonder how when how guys feel when they read this. Oh. 
But May Call was given to somebody else. So, man, oh man. So Ishbal sent for her to be taken for, from her husband, Paltiel, son of Laish. Her husband set off with her and followed her, weeping as he went as far as Bahurim. But Abner said to him, go back. And he went. Ah, you know what? While I was reading this, I was just thinking, I wonder if they had a happy marriage. You know, this might have been a really happy marriage. Sounds like it was. Why would a husband follow his wife that he has to give up? I mean, he can't fight these guys, right? And he's weeping while he has to let her go. It means what? He loved her. Sounds like he loved her. Sounds like they had a good relationship. So what's David doing? Now Abner conferred with the elders of Israel. For a long time now, he said, you have wanted David as your king. Now you must take action. Since Yahweh has said of David, by the hand of my servant David, I shall deliver my people Israel from the clutches of the Philistines and all their enemies. <laughs> okay. Uh, using the word of God for their own agenda. Right there, guys. That's how it works. Abner also spoke to the men of Benjamin and then went to Hebron to tell David everything that had been agreed by Israel and the house of Benjamin. Well, isn't Benjamin part of Israel? Agreed by Israel and the house of Benjamin. Okay, whatever. Abner, accompanied by 20 men, came to David at Hebron and David held a feast for Abner and the men who were with him. Abner then said to David, I must get up and go. I am going to rally all Israel to my lord, the king, so that they will make an alliance with you, and you will reign over all that you desire. Uh -huh. So David allowed Abner to go, and he went unmolested. What, Abner, after all this, had to still worry about... Okay, all right, all right, all right, whatever. The murder of Abner. <laughs> David's retain. <laughs> I can't help but laugh, you guys. I mean, this is like... Ah, ah! David's retainers were just then coming back with Joab from a raid. Is that the right word? A raid? Bringing a great quantity of booty with them. Abner was no longer with David at Hebron, since David had allowed him to go and he had gone unmolested. When Joab and the whole company with him had arrived, Joab was told Abner, son of Nair, has been the king king and the king has allowed Abner to go away unmolested whoa that's the first time that Abner was considered the king rather than Saul's son Ishbal oh you see we don't know everything that's going on all right all right all right, all right. Ah, excuse me <clears throat> Job then went to the king and said what have you done oh and David now is the king David and Joab then went to the king. So David is the king now. There's, there's no question anymore that he's the king, at least on, on the house of whatever, Judah. What have you done? Abner comes to you and you let him go away. Now he has gone. Why? You know Abner, son of Nair. He came to trick you, to discover your every move, to find out what you are doing. Joab left David's presence and sent messengers after Abner, and these, unknown to David, brought him back from the storage well at Sirah. When Abner reached Hebron, Joab took him aside in the town gate as if to have a quiet word with him, and there struck him a mortal blow in the belly to avenge the blood of his brother Azahel. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Afterwards, when David heard of this, he said, I and my kingdom are forever innocent before Yahweh of the blood of Abner, son of Nair. May it fall on the he head of Joab and on all his family. May the house of Joab never be free of men afflicted with hemorrhage or a virulent skin disease, whose strength is in the distaff, who fall by the sword, who lack food. Well, nice curse there. So David's mind now has, I mean, what he could do is take Job and say, okay, you know what? As the king now, I said, I'm the king. I said, he's going to go. Because he's actually, okay, putting me in place as a king all over Israel. Sounded like it. Sounds like it, right? 
And you did just what? So, as far as I know, way farther back, God had already put in place what you do with a murderer. And here, David is doing what? He's just cursing him and his whole family. All right? Yes? Is David a good king? Is he a good king over people? What? How does he lead his people? He should have known that there would be some conflict when Joab would know right, that he let him go, that he let Abner go. But it didn't. And should have had a talk with him. You will get your revenge. We are going to try him, but not now, for example. Something. Or you're going to have to trust me if you're going to accept me as your king. Right? Something. But that conversation we're not getting. And Joab goes ahead and, yeah. Okay. You see what's going on here? This is, where is God in all this? Right? Yes? And, yeah. David washes his hands. Ah, oh, well, I didn't do it. That's just on your family. Yep. Uh-uh. Yeah. Could David have done better to prevent this? Yeah. I'd say David has just as much blood on his hands as Joab does. So the curse is going to backfire on him. I have no doubt. Joab and his brother, Abishai, had murdered Abner because... Oh, now his brother was also in on it. Murdered Abner because he killed their brother Azahel at the cattle of Battle of Gibeon. David then said to Joab and the whole company with him, tear your clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourn over Abner. And King David walked behind the bier. They buried Abner at Hebron, and the king wept aloud on his grave, and the people all wept too. The king made his lament over Abner. Should Abner have died as a brute dies? Your hands were not tied, your feet not chained. You fell as a man falls at the hands of criminals. <laughs> <coughs> That's what you call to uh, put a clean sheet over a dirty one and hope nobody notices. And all the people wept for him louder than ever. <laughs> Such a show. <laughs> the people then all tried to persuade David to have some food while it was still daylight. But David swore this oath. May God bring unnameable ills on me, and worse ills too, if I have tasted bread or anything, whatever, until the sun is down. All the people took note of this, and it pleased them. Oh, indeed, everything the king did pleased the people. That day, all the people and all Israel understood that the king had had no part in the murder of Abner, son of Ner. The king said to his retainers, Do you not realize that a prince, a great man, has fallen in Israel today? Abner was a commander. How was he a prince? Of the army to begin with. Oh my gosh. I though anointed. I though anointed king. Am weak at present. And these men. The sins of Zeruiah. Are too strong for me. May Yahweh repay the criminal. As his crime deserves. Okay. Hang on a second. Mm -mm -mm. Uh. This is what took place during a war between the house of Saul and the house of David. Abner took complete control. Okay, wait a minute. Why did it say that? It said that... Oh, so the war dragged on between the house of Saul and the house of David, but David grew steadily stronger and the house of Saul, Saul, Saul steadily weaker. But now over here, what did it say? I, though anointed king, am weak at present, and these men, this is David talking, the sons of Zeruiah are too strong for me. May Yahweh repay the criminals as his crime deserves. Oh, we get, we're getting, what are we getting here? Constantly. <laughs> okay. I guess people don't notice that when they read this and... It goes in one ear out the other. But I'm... Okay, all right. Well, which is which now? Is he getting stronger and uh, 
and Saul's house is getting weaker, or is it the other way around? And Abner's gone now, so I have no idea. And that is the end of three. <laughs> and uh, we got the little blurb about all the sons born by all the different wives, and he wants to get, and he got Micah back, so he has seven wives. Okay, busy dude. I don't know if we're that busy with women, if you actually have time to uh, be a proper king to lead the people. I have no idea. Probably spends more time uh, figuring out how to have his wives get along than... Where are you going with this? I'm going in the direction that, yeah, one can see why things just didn't work out. Just did it. Just one thing after another. It's, it's, just, it's just a mess. Tell me. That's not a mess. It's a total mess. What did God say when Samuel came and said, They want a king. Israel wants a king. They want a king. They want to be like everybody else around them. They want a king. And I says, Well, you already know how I feel about that. I'm not good enough for the people of Israel. They want their own leader. Okay. I'm telling you. Go ahead, do what they want. Huh? Tell them, do what you want. But it's going to be a mess. It's a mess. It's already a mess. How many years has it been? Well, I could maybe figure that out. Huh? Hundred? No, it hasn't been a hundred years in Saul. Let's see, 40, maybe 40 years. 40 years, 50 years. It's already a mess. It's a total mess. Might be less, 30 years. Total mess. Absolute mess. Complete mess. <laughs> It's not funny, isn't it? It's sad because the consequences of that mess are still, there are felt all around the world. All around the world. Interestingly enough, why don't, they, why don't they just talk about the kingship and the battles and this and that? No, they're talking about all their wives too. Yeah. yeah. So today when I look at all the problems around the world, especially when it comes to the principles of love, right? yes, not just leadership, <clears throat> this and that, but the relation, relationship you know, between men and women. And then the children who have pulled into all this absolute nonsense, in one, one form or another, often unborn. Huh? Yeah. Interesting. Just this one passage right there. Look around the world. What a mess. What a mess it is. Oh, a lot of people out there do just fine. They're physically fine. They got their homes. They got food. They raise their children properly. Right? Children go to school. They do sports. They do art. They do dance. They do this. They do that. Well, things good for a lot of people around the world. They really are, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm, how content are people out there? How happy are people out there? Mm? How happy can one be when you know in the back of your mind that there are children out there right now who are being horrifically abused? Children. See, I'm not even talking about adults. Children. Abner goes to David and says, I'm going to fix it so that you as a king have everything that you desire. You desire. David desires. Okay. That's exactly how we have it, don't we? Yes. Everybody has exactly what they desire. In many ways. When their life is going good, and this and that. And yes. Okay. Well, I think that when people have also a hard time with their spiritual nature, that then makes itself huh, known as often depression. Yes. Yeah. Anxiety. Mm hmm. 
fear. Uh, what was that other one? Uh, paranoia. Uh, yes. That then results into other, uh, greater, greater confusion. Uh, that, uh, then, uh, it's, I think, also often because we push things into the background and um, not realizing how sensitive we are. Oftentimes, in the light of others. But what are you going to do? Right? What are you going to do? Well, I said, there's another world. There's another world that can work in this world. Very much. Yeah. And sometimes we help with that. And sometimes we're the helper. Yes, that's one way. Where you're not just pushing things behind you. Because yeah? it doesn't concern you. But where you, you, you try yeah, to truly listen. To whom now? Who is our leader? Who is our ultimate parent? Who is the creator? Who is the best guide that you could ever have in all your life? God. Listen to God. You may have just one little job. Huh? Huh? My job, reading the Bible, giving my two cents to it. That's something. And that's something you will feel proud of. Yes? And that is something that then yeah, writes your mind. You become stronger. Yes? Okay. That's what I wanted to share this morning. Do, 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 do. Oh, what do I have to do today? What do I have to do today? What do I have to do today? What do I want to do today? It's a never-ending story here. One thing at a time. I can't stress either. <laughs> One thing at a time. Yes. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful day. Oh, the fall colors are happening. Got to do a little gathering of things. And thank God I have the farrier come tomorrow. Yes. That's that's a good thing. Looking forward to finding out what's going on with Maverick Hooves. That one. Mm-hmm. 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 Done. Done talking. What do you do? I don't know. I have to wait till tomorrow if you guys don't give it to me now. Huh? Maybe I just want to be on video a little longer. <coughs> That's fine, too. You guys are all welcome. <laughs> God's love and blessings always. May he protect you. And I will talk to you all another time.